Welcome to day three of Warhammer 40k spoiler season. I mean, okay, there was a couple of, you know, days a while back where they had like a couple of miscellaneous spoilers, but official spoiler season is here. And if you haven't seen my episode ending yesterday on Nexos, make sure you check that one out because finally, 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 this card is perfect. So if you want to see why I say that, well, make sure you check that episode out, but not before you stay tuned to this episode because... This episode is all about a brand new, incredibly unique, and exciting commander. And make sure you blame Eddie in the comments below for all of Eddie's great help throughout spoiler season. And now, let's jump into it. Now, just a quick disclaimer before we get started with this one. As you can see, this is a custom version of the card, you know, with that set symbol, you know, and, and other things on it. But yeah, basically, this is a translated version of the card that was spoiled because that card, I believe, was spoiled in Japanese. So this is the English translation according to those on Reddit. Now, the Reddit translations have been pretty accurate so far with many things over the years. So, I mean, I'm pretty sold on this being the actual translation, but until we see the official, you know, and English translation, just please, please, please keep that in mind. Though, again, I'm, you know, 99, 100% sure, basically, that this is the actual card. Anyways, here we go. Lucius the Eternal, a 5-3 Astartes warrior with haste that costs three black red. It has Bell of Soul Scream. When it dies, exile and instead and choose target creature in opponent controls. When that creature leaves the battlefield, return Lucius the Eternal from Exile to the battlefield under its owner's control. So Eternal is definitely a good name for this one because my goodness is it going to be hard to get rid of this commander. And yeah, there are some pretty exciting and spicy things that you can do with it. Again, when it dies, you essentially just have to pick out a creature and okay, uh, the, obviously there are some, you know, jankier things that you could do with this, some pretty broken things that you could do with this if you could choose one of your own as well but yeah i mean thinking that limitation was probably needed so you are choosing an opponent's creature but as soon as that creature you know is taken out or just leaves the battlefield in any way so again that counts you know being exiled that counts being you know bounce that player's hand you know that counts obviously you know that creature going to the graveyard no matter where it goes then lucius the eternal comes back into play from exile so essentially, yeah, I mean, as long as your opponents have creatures on the board, you are going to get around from paying commander tax pretty much, you know, ever. You never have to recast this commander ever because, you know, you're just going to keep picking an opponent's creature. Your commander is going to leave. And then as soon as that opponent's creature leaves, and yeah, you've got plenty of ways to deal with creatures, obviously, in this color combination, you get your commander back. And of course, there are plenty of ways to use and abuse that. And yeah, there are some very powerful things that you can do with this commander and some very unexpected things that you can do as well. Now, again, the translated version of this card, you know, the official English translation will probably be out later today. So make sure and look out for that. So disclaimer. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to mention cards that work very well with this commander, with the way that this is written right now. If some things change, obviously, you know, please, please, please keep that in mind. That being said, I can see a lot of players being excited about a unique commander like this one, especially because some of the, you know, really interesting things that you can do with it that I'm going to bring up. So if you are interested in this commander, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. It's got all the cards I talk about in this episode. And yeah, when a new exciting commander like this one is spoiled, cards that work well that might go up in price. So make sure you pick up some of those cards sooner rather than later. Though again, I would urge you to probably, you know, wait until the actual English translation comes out, which again is probably going to be later today at some point, so make sure and look out for that. And once that does happen, sure, go ahead and jump on picking up those cards because, yeah, there's some exciting things that you can do with this commander. And now with all that said, let's jump into the cards. First up, one of the very first cards that came to my mind is Attrition. In my goodness, this is a fun card with this commander. It's an achievement for one black, black, and it has pay a black, sacrifice a creature, destroy target, non-black creature. In combination with this commander, well, 
gross, essentially. <laughs> All you have to do is just keep playing a black again and again and again as many times as you want, essentially, to take out whatever opponent's creatures you want to take out that, you know, are non-black creatures. Because, yeah, I'm paying a black to sacrifice my commander, you know, as part of the cost for this, my commander is going to say, okay, I pick that creature and I'm going to get exiled. And I'm also going to be destroying that creature, you know, and then uh, when that creature is destroyed, my commander then comes back. So, you know, you just have kind of infinite fodder, not infinite, obviously. <laughs> it's, you know, obviously limited with the number of creatures that your opponents have that are targets for this. And, and, and yeah, I mean, actually targets for your commander, but obviously this is more restrictive. You know what I mean? Anyways, <laughs> I mean, obviously, this is a fantastic way to just wipe out your opponent's armies whenever you need to. I mean, obviously, you're limited based on your mana, but this can be just a fantastic card just to have on the board as a way to threaten your opponents, you know, basically until the end of the turn right before yours, and then just wipe out whatever creatures you need to, and just your commander's gonna be back in play. And of course, there are some other kind of sneaky ways that you can basically wipe the board as well, thanks to this commander's, again, very unique approach. So now let's move on and talk about cards like, you know, Warstorm Surge, Where Ancients Tread, and Terror of the Peaks. Each of these cards is fantastic with this commander. First up, Warstorm Surge. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So again, our commander has five power. That's five damage to any target, which is a ton. Where Ancients Tread, basically the exact same thing for this commander. Whenever a creature with power five or greater enters the battlefield under control, you may have Where Ancients Tread, deal five damage to our creature or player. And then Terror of the Peaks, a more expensive version of these, but yeah, a very good version too. Spell your opponents cast the target Terror of the Peaks, cost additional three life to cast, so that's nice. Whenever another creature in his battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Basically, again, any time your commander comes into play, and that's going to be happening a lot, you are pinging something for five. Now, obviously, in combination, you know, with something like Attrition, that is absolutely incredible. You're still taking out creatures with Attrition. You can also utilize these, again, to just ping down your opponents, well, either the other creatures, or, you know, more likely, ping them in the face repeatedly. I mean, with that, I mean, you're basically just paying a single black mana to take out one of their creatures and ping them in the face for five with any of these each and every single time. So, yeah, you can take players out quickly with that kind of a combination. But also, and you know, if you don't have attrition, but you have another sacrifice outlet, and there are plenty of free sacrifice outlets in these colors that are fantastic, you can also utilize these to take out creatures and to keep getting your commander back. For example, let's say your commander is coming into play with Warstorm Surge in play. Cool. All right, I'll target that creature, you know, just a, a creature you can take out that, you know, has got, what, five or less toughness, essentially. Cool, I'll target them, and then I will sacrifice my commander with that Warstorm Surge trigger still on the stack. So then my commander's trigger happens, I choose the creature that I target war with Warstorm Surge, and then that creature is going to get taken out with that Warstorm Surge ping, which then brings my commander back. So yeah, free sacrifice outlets can be huge with this commander, and, and yeah, these cards especially can be great. So even if it's just, say, a Carrion Feeder, which, you know, is a great free sacrifice outlet, this can just be absolutely crucial to you, again, pulling something like this off a 1-1 zombie that costs a single black mana. It can't block, but that's fine. We're going to be taking out a lot of creatures with this deck. So, yeah, this can probably get through quite a bit. Sacrifice a creature, put a plus one counter on Carrion Feeder. So this can become a very heavy hitter. And again, it's a free sacrifice outlet that we can utilize whenever we need to for free. So again, in combination with, you know, any of those cards we just listed, War, Storm, Surge, Rage, and Strand, Tear the Peaks, any of those, essentially, that's kind of like a one-sided board wipe. Well, okay, more specifically, a one-sided board wipe as long as you're taking out, you know, creatures with five toughness or less. But you know what I mean. And obviously, like I mentioned, I mean, there are plenty of fantastic sacrifice outlets in these colors, and of course, there are plenty of ones that can provide us even more value like, you know, Viserysir, Yawgmoth, and Erebos Blackhearted. Viserysir, a great sacrifice outlet, sacrifice the creature, scry one. So, yeah, now every single time we are sacrificing our commander, and again, if we're doing it in combination, you know, with a Warstorm Surge or something like that, we can just keep doing it over and over and over again. We can keep scrying to, you know, just keep getting a fantastic card selection off the top of our library to get the cards that we need. Yawgmoth takes a step further. Pay one life, sacrifice another creature, put a minus one, minus one up to one target creature, and draw a card. So Yawgmoth can actually take out, you know, small creatures or, you know, build up counters to actually take out even larger creatures. And of course, it can provide us card advantage. Now, I mean, it is a free sacrifice outlet, but technically, I mean, we are also, you know, paying a life. So not technically free, but 
One life for one card and potential takeout creatures is incredible, and yeah, I'll take that any day of the week. Speaking of which, Erebos is somewhat similar. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. So yeah, I mean, no matter what our sacrifice outlet is that we're utilizing, we can get card advantage with that. And if we do need to utilize Erebos' sacrifice effect, we can pay one to black sacrifice. Another creature target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. So this can be another way to take out small creatures. And again, yes, that is a paid effect, but it can be worth it in many situations. But another free sacrifice outlet you're going to want to consider is Phyrexian Plague Lord. Sacrifice a creature, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So again, a potential way to actually just take out tiny creatures that our opponents might have. Speaking of which, there's Gun Bombardment. Sacrifice a creature, Gun Bombardment deals one damage to any target. So yeah, we can either ping players to the face or, you know, ping down small creatures or, you know, just build up and ping down bigger and bigger creatures. And then Blasting Station, again, is pretty similar to this as well. Tap, sacrifice a creature, Blasting Station deals one damage target, creature or player. Whenever a creature comes into play, you may untap Blasting Station. Again, our commander is going to be coming back into play whenever creatures get taken out, you know, that, that, that it targeted, essentially. So, yeah, this is going to untap quite a bit throughout the game for us. We even have, you know, lands that can help us out with sacrificing as well, like a Phyrexian Tower, tap for a colorless, or tap sacrifice a creature, add black, black. So now sacrificing our commander can actually just net us some mana as well from something like this. I mean, and actually, I, I probably should have brought up, uh, what's that slug's name? Thermopod, it's early, sorry. Thermopod is a fantastic sacrifice out as well. Sacrifice a creature, add red. Yeah, a great one. But, but yeah, I mean, there are plenty of free sacrifice outlets out there that you can utilize in this color combination. And of course, on top of that, there are, you know, one-off effects as well, like Disciple of Bolus, which is incredible with this commander. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature, you gain X life and draw X cards or X that creature's power. So cool. We just draw five cards, gain five life, lose our commander, which is great because our commander is going to be coming back at some point. And yeah, we can utilize it for other effects as well. Like, you know, Village Rites. Village Rites is a great one-off sacrifice effect. This is just cost cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards for just a single mana at instant speed. So, of course, we are not lacking in ways to get rid of our commander so that we can eventually get it back. Or how about, you know, like a repeatable way on an end step trigger like Braids Arisen Nightmare, brand new card. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. So this can help decimate your opponent's armies even further. And if they don't, I mean, they're going to get drained and you draw more and more cards. And yeah, at a certain point, this can just net you a ton of cards and your opponents, well, are going to be lacking in the creature department. Now, of course, you can take advantage of your commander, you know, entering and leaving the battlefield over and over again with cards like Impact Tremors, Perfros, and Outpost Sage. Impact Tremors says whenever a creature is battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. So yeah, just ping your opponents down while all this craziness is going on. And of course, Perforos takes that a step further. Whenever their creature is battlefield under your control, Perforos deals two damage to each opponent. So yeah, I mean, three opponents at six damage in total just for your commander coming into play. That's going to happen quite a bit throughout the game. Or how about a more targeted approach like Outpost Siege? Whenever a creature control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to any target. Your commander is going to be leaving the battlefield quite a bit. So yeah, some extra value out of this, you know, either pinging your opponents to the face or this can actually be another great way to get some additional damage on some creatures that you might be able to take out. Again, let's say you sacrifice, you know, your commander with Phyrexian Plague Lord. Minus one, minus one to a creature that has two toughness. Use your outpost siege trigger to also just ping that creature for one to take that creature out to bring your commander back. So yeah, there are a lot of different combinations that really can stack together and work very well with this commander. And another one of my favorites, though, is actually with Genesis Chamber. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature controller creates a 1-1 cost mirror artifact creature token. First up, I mean, this can actually be a great way to force your opponents to just make tiny creature tokens that you can very easily take out, again, with things like, you know, Outpost Siege, or again with things like uh, Phyrexian Plague Lord, Yawgmoth, etc, etc, etc. So then your commander has more and more targets for you to be able to take out and for you to be able to get your commander back. And of course, on top of that, every single time a non-token creature comes into play under your control, including your commander, which again is going to happen an absurd amount of times with a deck like this, you get a free creature token. So you're going to build up an army very, very quickly. 
Or, you know, you can utilize those creature tokens, again, you know, by sacrificing them with Yogmoth for extra card draw and extra minus one, minus one counters on creatures. Or again, Phyrexian Plague Lord, take down your opponent's creatures, Goblin Bombardment, ping your opponent's to the face. There's a lot of things that you can do with those extra tokens that you're getting just for free because your commander keeps coming back into play. But yeah, now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Lucius the Eternal. This is a very unique commander, a very spicy commander, and one that I'm excited to actually, you know, build around and, and see what kind of craziness can really go on. So yeah, I think this one has a lot of potential, and I think a lot of players out there are going to be very excited about it. That being said, again, please, please, please keep in mind, we do not have, you know, the official, you know, English version of the card released just yet. So if you are interested in this commander, sure. I mean, definitely check out that link in the description below. It's got the list of cards I talked about on this episode. And yeah, maybe prepare to pick up some of those cards if you are that excited about this commander. But hold off on actually, you know, picking up any cards until the official English version is revealed. Again, I am 99.99999% sure that this is, you know, basically the actual version, but you know, some of the words might change on it ever so slightly, and that could change exactly how this works. So please, please, please keep that in mind. I mean, I, I assume this is this is how it is, but you know, you never know. Regardless, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.